Hello, everybody. It is the second time that I am in the settlements in the Gaza Strip, and it's the second time I arrived here is in view of a potential security challenge. What we see in front of us recently in the last few weeks, in the last few months, and the last few days, and especially last night, is a loss of deterrence of the State of Israel. The deterrence is eroded, and the one that determines the agenda, unfortunately, is not the State of Israel, but this is the factors in Gaza. We must return our initiative. We have to take a very harsh policy, a continuous one, in a way that Hamas will want to return to complete complete silence, complete quiet, as it was at the end of Protective Edge. And after we obtain that, we don't waste three and a half years and do nothing, but we go to other horizons. First of all, to strengthen the deterrence, complete quiet. And in the villages and towns here in the Gaza Strip, wonderful people, they work their land, they develop their infrastructure, and there's communities, and they stand uh, as heroes. It's true for here, and it's true for the cities of Kiryat Gat and Tel Aviv, and every place in the state of Israel. What we see is the loss of a security path. We must urgently go back to the source. Questions, please. Just a second. I'm going to manage this. Nahum Barnea. The journalist. I'm afraid we can't hear him. Can you explain? What about the media in the last few years? I thank you for your question and the fact that it's you who is asking. I thank you for the question and the fact that you are asking, because you know very well, just as I do, that we are now in a risk of a continuous security incident. And, and in the reality in which we are now, there is a, a political uh, gossip kind of uh, uh, voyage. I gave my message, and all this gossip that's going around, I'm talking about security, that's more important. And you have to know, Nahum, there are two very big incidents here, and don't blur it. We have a war on our home, and we have a struggle for democracy and ethics, and we see that this is not happening, and the other part of of struggling for democracy and ethics is going rampant. I don't think Benny Gantz is the story. That telephone is nothing. There's nothing security that is there. There's nothing about me. It's just uh, uh, It's just petty, petty gossip. Mr. Gantz, you said uh, that maybe there are embarrassing pictures in those uh, tape. People, there's a much more severe problem here than the telephone of Benny Gantz. Please show respect. Almog, please. Two questions. First of all, the situation here in the Gaza Strip. Don't you think that the restrained policy in the last 24 hours um, is not a, a very good idea? And uh, on the other hand, we have negotiations through the Egyptians and the the second question regarding the telephone, why didn't you update Yair Lapid about it before uh, it happened? I think that the activity that the Egyptians are doing in the Gaza Strip is very important. They are partners, they are neighbors, they are people that we have a peace agreement with. These are people that we have a joint security path with them, and it's very welcome. As you know, I am not against uh, Quiet, but quiet has to be responded with quiet. But uh, we see that uh, uh, suitcases of monies go in and uh, then they go back uh, empty. The Egyptians know it, the government knows it, and we hope that the Hamas people in Gaza will also know it. And Yair and the others are not relevant to this at all. I uh, got the update from the Shabak. It is a local issue. It, I'm not going to burn uh, my sources. 
Two questions. Do you believe uh, to what Hamas is saying that it was a mistake? that they launched the rockets by mistake. And what about the cellular phone? I am not exposed to the intelligence uh, um, information now. I rely on the IDF, and I think that uh, they are jeopardizing our security. And if that's what they're doing, we can retaliate. I want you to know where I'm heading to. I went into politics in order to serve the state of Israel. I know very well that I'm paying high prices. I know that I'll pay even higher prices. I know that uh, I'm uh, dealing here with liars, people in the lowest place. The state of Israel is more important to me than this nonsense. I'm going to continue. I'm doing it for my kids, for your kids, and I'm not going to add another word about this. Just two questions. I'm listening to your words about Gaza. I don't quite understand what you're saying about the government. Are you for the money, suitcases or not? If you want to be the prime minister of the state of Israel, you cannot allow uh, foreign countries to intervene. Uh, did you have any connect, contact with the world? that might jeopardize your... I want to tell you that I had no security threat on me. There's nothing. And I'm not in for blackmail. No way. As for the security issue, which is the more essential one, and I'm really... I want to plead with you. Somebody is making a spin here. It's making the big problem to something that doesn't exist, and that's a mistake. The security issue is real. It's painful. Netanyahu and his friends want to uh, exert their policy. I think we should do it not hesitantly. We have to do it for the people who live here, who live there, or any other place. And I want to say thank you very much for coming. And to you, the inhabitants, and to all the citizens of Israel, Shabbat Shalom. Have a good Shabbat. And thank you, everybody. To If you've just joined us, that was...